All right, it's about time we move on to a little animation in this series. So oh, what part are we up to? Who knows? It doesn't really matter, actually. As long as you know how to create a symbol at this point, you can play along with uh, animating whatever you want. Uh, of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess around with the logo here. Uh, if you guys remember from the last video, this is separated uh, up into quite a few different elements. And that will actually work well for us. Let's go and play by the rules here to animation. Uh, in Adobe Animate, we're going to distribute this to layers. And let's get rid of the ones that... Uh, actually, we'll leave one buffer layer between what we had before. And get rid of that empty layer over here. Okay, so uh, as you guys all know by now, you can uh, select each element by clicking the keyframe over here. And uh, one important thing is uh, that uh, to do the uh, animation that we're going to look at first here, we'll just we'll play around some classic uh, tweens. We'll, uh, we need everything to be on its own uh, separate layer, okay? So every symbol on its own layer. So one layer per symbol per uh, tween. And we don't need much many frames of the timeline here. We'll just go with what we've already got. Uh, if you are starting from scratch and so you don't have any extra frames on your timeline to work with, well, what you want to do is get used to the F5 hotkey, which is going to insert in more frames. So for example, I could go and uh, put in a whole bunch more over this way. Uh, you'll notice that uh, because no frames exist over here for what we currently, what we already had, uh, you don't see them anymore, okay? Uh, but if I came over here and I hit F5, well, there you go. All that stuff is uh, back again. And uh, that is, again, inserting in frames. So you can do that by right-clicking as well. Just go over to here to uh, insert uh, in frame, okay? Not insert blank keyframe, not insert keyframe, just insert frame. And you can see as soon as I do that, it pushes out that many that I had uh, selected over that way. Uh, but I guess while we're on the topic, uh, you can insert in some blank keyframes. So for example, that will just blank out what was... Um, uh, previously on that uh, timeline. So it's it still exists at frame one, but on frame two, you can see that it's gone. And anytime we want to make a change to something, we're going to set in a keyframe. Whether or not we do a motion tween or tween between those, uh, it, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, you can, you, can, you can go frame by frame if you wanted. Just, you know, keep making changes to it. Changes to it. Obviously, we didn't make any changes to it. I'm just putting in extra keyframes. And again, that is F6. And in terms of some of the other uh, fundamentals over here, you can copy frames, you can cut them, you can uh, paste frames. And uh, again, a lot of that just involves kind of selecting all these, copy frames, and then paste frames in there. So you can see that would loop that little effect that we had in there previously. All right, so on to the uh, tweening. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's hit uh, F6 on all these ones over here. And then somewhere in the middle, we'll hit F6 again. And then what I'm going to do is just select a, just any span between here. This will work. Or I can just select you know, these ones. And then I'm going to right click. We're going to go over here to Create Classic Tween. And even though nothing is going on with this tween right now, it's, um, uh, it could be, OK? So I can make changes to uh, these middle frames. And what would ultimately happen is it would uh, move things out to here. Okay, so the difference would be noted. So for example, like that. And then it would come on back. So I'd make a nice little loop if I were to test the movie, right? So just go up and down, up and down endlessly, right? So uh, in the test the movie, you can, uh, well, there's a couple ways but you can do that. You can go over here to uh, test scene. The hotkey for that is command and uh, return. And uh, actually, or you could, um, here you go. That, sorry, test is the command and return. Uh, or another thing you could just do is uh, just hit return on the keyboard, and it's going to just play the uh, the timeline over there. And then if you wanted to uh, loop it, all you got to do is go over here to loop playback. So you'll see now it's just going to loop things through there. So uh, that is a weird thing that we got going on, right, <laughs> over here. Now, if I wanted to uh, kind of undo that, right, well, obviously I could hit undo a bunch of times. I could move it back into place. But another thing I could do is I could just uh, hold down the option key on the keyboard and just drag out this other frame that I already had, okay? And then just that would just replace that one. So effectively, you know, it's just the same keyframe over there now. Uh, so what can we do with this? You know, we could, uh, there's all sorts of properties we could, uh, we could uh, tween, right? So we could take the alpha down on it, right? See how that works. Uh, obviously, we could, um, you know, we could move the whole thing. We could even skew it. That's using the free transform tool. Uh, 
Uh, we could animate any one of the uh, the filtered properties. That one actually doesn't have a filter on it. What could we do with that? Maybe let's tint it a little bit. All right. So I go. Not that exciting. <laughs> um, we uh, we could obviously scale it down. Now most of your tweens are going to look a lot better if you uh, if you play around with the easing on it. So right now they have a, a basically just a linear it's a, a linear line going from one to another. Okay, so there there should be an equal amount of uh, change between each one of these frames to get from you know one state to the other. Uh, what we could do though is we could uh, ease them in, uh, we could ease them out. So here's how that line kind of changes. So you get the idea, so kind of a straight line over there that, that that's easing them in. So basically, uh, there's not as much movement in the beginning as there is at the end between this frame and this one over here. Um, a lot of times I'll go with ease out. So let's see, this will ease it out and then ease it in. And it might be kind of hard to tell with this particular example, but uh, actually, is it even doing it at all? Classic ease in. Actually, that one I want to be eased out. I don't think it was doing it. Let's see. Well, yeah, now it's certainly a lot different. So, yeah, it's got kind of a uh, more of a rhythmic vibe to it at that point. Uh, that's interesting. You know, they did. This is a new little option that they put in here where they uh, let you. They kind of have these uh, built-in, you know, ways of easing. But uh, but what's strange about it is why did it not register that? I guess maybe now it did. Huh. Well, that's a yeah, – that pops, huh? Uh, okay, so that's one way of doing a tween. Let's go pick on somebody else over here. Maybe the, maybe the hair of this guy. So I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to paste the hair up on top of there. And then uh, let's right click on this and just go over here to create motion tween. And you'll notice uh, this time around, I didn't have to put in another keyframe at the end of this. Okay. So basically the, uh, you know, the, it already registers. Okay. The, you're going to do something here with this thing. Uh, so anytime I move around, it's going to basically put in a, uh, just automatically a keyframe, right? So, and you'll see, all right. So basically you got this like kind of straight line from this point to this point. All right, so it's giving you an indication of what's going to happen here. All right, this thing kind of just elevators off, <laughs> takes the escalator. Uh, and, but you, the neat thing about this is you can also uh, uh, you can mess around with the um, the curve of this too. So you can see you can do something like this. Right. So so I didn't actually have to do any sort of um, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't have to put in more than one. Uh, uh, key, keyframe essentially between these. Whereas if I'd done it with a classic tween over here, for me to get this hair over to that point, you know, somewhere here in the middle, uh, I would have had to put in there another keyframe there. Now, of course, you do have that option. You could, you know, as soon as you start moving it again, you could, you can, you know, put another one in, and you can, uh, you can remove these as well. So remove. Uh, oh well, that got rid of all of it. Uh, Oh, yeah, mess it up again. And in the uh, lesson where I did make that uh, this little spark effect earlier in this series, uh, I had uh, onion skin outlines on. So if you click on this, uh, what it basically does is make it makes it so that you can see what's happening with some of the other frames as you kind of step through your animation. So for example, let's see, just to kind of do this again. So you can see I drew that over there. Then I'm gonna hit F7 on this, and then. You get this kind of trailing artifact of where you had been before, right? So then uh, I know that this was the beginning of the previous frame, so I'm going to keep doing that. Hit uh, F7 to blank out the next keyframe, F7, F7, and so on like that. So you can kind of keep an eye on, uh, on where you've been, right? Like so. And I would say uh, in terms of things that could trip you up a little bit, um, let's suppose I wanted to uh, maybe compress the time between 
movements or keyframes over here. Uh, one way of doing that would be to, uh, and if I wanted to, to affect all these other layers, let's just say these ones, I, I could just go over here, right click and just go remove frames. And you'll see that basically this chunk that I had select, selected, that's exactly the same amount that it removed uh, from over here. Uh, fortunately, uh, Adobe now put in here an option to uh, scale content. So, or I'm sorry, scale frame spans if you, um, if you were going to adjust the FPS or something like that. So, you know, that would be another way of kind of adjusting, um, you know, the, let's see what it just happened over there. The, uh, you know, the length of, uh, your keyframes and at least it, you know, does it uniformly between things over there. So, and actually look at that, they got scale content over here for the size as well So all sorts of nice little options, but, uh, but you could, you could, that's a little bit easier because you could use that edit multiple frames to kind of scale, uh, you know, everything up or down in size. Uh, okay, I've really junked up this file, huh? Let's, uh, let me get out of here as quick as possible so I don't have to look at this guy's hair floating off uh, any longer. Okay, see you in the next video.